Howdy all you delicious people. I'm here today to review The Ring 2002. I say that because I went into Google uh, to like Google The Ring and it seems like there was like a couple other movies that evidently were to be done. Uh, I don't know if this is like a remake, uh, like a Japanese remake or whichever, uh, but I would naturally assume so. Uh, but I was also kind of interested or fascinated to see if this movie ever got to have a sequel or any number of things afterwards. Like maybe they rebooted it or remade it or whichever. Uh, because also really looking at this film, like it has a short, like it has a short shelf life just because it is to... Uh, be a tape that, of course, is a VHS that plays into a VCR that, like, I know there's a lot of people that love nostalgia or retroactive or retroly uh, going back to just watch old older things, just like, ooh, simpler times when you just pop in a VHS and whichever and play the movie. Uh, you don't have to worry about, like, a disc scratching or you buying a disc and the disc be broken or you would have problems streaming something because uh, Wi-Fi is out <laughs> or whatever bizarre thing of like, oh, well, like uh, maintenance. So this app is going to be down for X amount of days or whichever uh, goofy thing is going on. Because um, it's like, it's kind of interesting how we basically it's slowly but surely becoming that like discs now, like, uh, like DVD, Blu-ray, 4k, 3d, uh, everything else in between. Uh, now it's just coming down to like just streaming to where everybody's just waiting on that. Uh, like I think like stores are like selling things digitally, digital copies of stuff. That's the other thing, but I'm just waiting eventually to where that will just run out and it'll just get to a point when uh, all that matters is eventually just going to be like just streaming. That's it, uh, especially because it's a lot more convenient. And plus, you can go onto an app like Fox HD movies that I've been using fairly reliably and watch the ring. Uh, so. Uh, just go into uh, Google Play and uh, see the word Fox, Fox HD movies on a logo, but the title will say something different. Uh, you can download that app and dare in fact watch seemingly any number of things for absolutely free. There's no fees of any kind, but you can pretty much watch any number of stuff without having to go into specific apps. Burden of that, right? Just, <laughs> I'm going to go and watch whatever I want, whenever I want. So with that said, how do I feel about The Ring, besides its evidently short shelf life? Well, I would honestly say that this movie has to hands down, besides its urban legend or its lore or its mythology-ish thing, where really that's where the bread and butter of this movie just exists with like, hey, I don't remember anything about this movie, but all I remember... It's a movie where somebody watches some video and a week later they end up dying for whatever reason. I understand that they rationalize at the end of the movie why seven days, but still, I honestly would love to see the killer side of the perspective of this film because we don't see the girl who's to be like Samantha. We don't see... D word of her like <laughs> she is just like never really showing up until the seventh day. I'm like what does she like put this thing on her like uh, to do schedule or her like calendar and then is like oh, okay well I'm gonna go to Disneyland or I'm gonna go and see the sights I'm gonna go and uh finish up my watching of my favorite show uh, I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to go to a baseball game if we can even still do that and any number of stuff. And then, then I will go and just murder this person for whatever reason, <laughs> but not even really just murder, I guess, really 
when you really see this thing, it like the end result, it just seems like they like sucked the life out of this person, maybe question mark something. Uh, but I think also a lot of people had questions about why this was actually called the ring. Uh, like weirdly, I think about around the time that this movie came out, did Lord of the Rings come out? So I think immediately my connection with this movie was like Lord of the Rings also. Uh, and I was just like, okay, like, uh, like what is up with all these ring movies? <laughs> Like, also, this came out, I think, around the time that Heroes came out. And I think they changed their, like, signia or whatever to to look like the ring, weirdly. Uh, but anyways, so... Uh, so, pushing on. So, I would honestly say that The Ring is the most boring horror film I have probably ever seen. And people might just be like, oh, no, I saw this movie and it's the most boring thing. Or somebody will probably have seen something that I had reviewed and said, like, yeah, that movie was awful. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. Like, hey, man, I got to review things anyways. I got to review everything. Um, plus the ring, like, uh, it, like, I don't know for whatever reason, like, the ring just popped in there. Uh, really, you just get also, like, the scary movie parody things always come back and talk about this a lot. Uh, like during a certain time period and so really I think that like the scary movies ended up keeping the ring alive uh, because really there's like scary movies where uh, eventually they kind of go through this whole thing why didn't like the scary movies cover like stir of echoes <laughs> the Kevin Bacon film uh, which I think that this is questionably a lot like uh if you've never seen Stir of Echoes, oh my god, is that actually a... Like, I would say it's a decent film. I haven't seen it in a while, so I don't know how well it holds up. But Stir of Echoes with Kevin Bacon is an interesting film, at least. Uh, I think there's also a movie... Oh, yeah. Like, you would obviously have to say, like, The Ring or, like, stuff like that kind of open the doors to had a heavy certain villainish character look a certain way uh all of a sudden we had these like long haired characters where you don't really see their face until like the real close up moment where it's like ha and it's like oh my god that's gross uh so i think the ring ushered that where like we see care uh, we had like women like grudge and a bunch of women that had these like severely long hair or just eventually just looked a certain way for a while and then we finally were just like dude like why are we doing this whole long hair thing forever <laughs> like it kind of eventually died i think and they're just like dude like like we should just go back to making these characters look much more like slasher ish like characters but then eventually we'll run out of like clothing to throw on people uh because how many times have we done like ski masks or any number of things like uh like in urban legends we had that big like uh, uh winter coat like we're running out of stuff to just throw on people or running out of things to make monsters or or villainous characters look at some point i think that's why really slashers just died because they couldn't find a unique enough character that people actually liked uh, or it just really ran its course because they made like 8500 things of those movies with the exclusion of Halloween, because there's Halloween Kills that is coming up soon, because it's October, and it's 22. <laughs> it's still dead 2020s. 2021s, I mean. What, what am I saying? It seems like I've said this a year ago. Anyways, so pushing on. So, this movie is overly boring. Uh, if you're a horse lover, you're probably going to hate this movie. If you've even seen a horse once, you're probably just like, I hate this film. Uh, so, bear that in mind, uh, also, they researched the crap out of these characters, but they didn't research the fact of, why would horse breeders be making a film? You know what, I, I want to see the Ring movie, where they justify to me why these people 
made this movie in the first effing place. And then I will just be like, okay, like that was a good film that justifies this movie. But no, we didn't. I don't think they made that film where they justified why these people put this thing together and how they did it. And which I, I haven't seen that movie yet. I want to see that. Uh, give me an origin thing of the ring where uh, it seems like they could still pull that off. And like, yeah, it would be a retro thing, but I don't care. Like, I think a lot of people would be interested in that. But maybe that's just me. So, yeah, I've talked about this long enough. Uh, let's get into the spoilers of this. Because uh, reasonably, because I think it's about that time. Uh, I've talked 10 minutes in. And I really haven't said much about the movie. Because it's boring. <laughs> it's, it's, in all honesty, it really is. Uh, it's not even scary. It's like unsettling. It's an unsettling film. But even that, I'm just like, I have to kind of question that. Where it's like, is it really unsettling though? Do people probably get scared of this movie? Maybe. Um, but anyways, spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about that time we need to spoil this movie. So, uh, the very beginning of the film, we have these two girls who are Katie and Becca. Becca? Uh, just kind of watching TV. And so Katie is to mention, like, all these facts about... Uh, that TV is quite possibly burning out our brain cells and that there might be some like TV waves that are hitting us and we don't even realize it. So in other words, what, can we live to like 200 if we only just didn't watch TV or didn't like do anything with like, don't even go onto a phone or an app or a, or a TV or nothing. Just, <laughs> just avoid all of technology and you'll live till a billion uh, is, I guess, what Katie is to just say. Plus, also, if Katie is to have all of these things upon her head, just say, oh, yeah, like, like I think that uh, really me watching t TV is to forcibly give me a lesser IQ, then why is she watching TV? <laughs> Avoid the TV at all costs, Katie. Every time someone's to turn a TV on, Katie's like, no, and then she should leave the room. Because here is a stupid thing. So, Becca is to eventually sit next to Katie and mention, like, hey, do you hear the, like, the urban legend that's going on about the, the tape that someone was to watch? And then they end up dying seven days later? Okay, so, who was the very first person that was to... Watch the tape with a person who didn't watch the tape. So that way they can record every single moment of this tape watching to realize just like, oh yeah, so that person did die within the seventh day. I'm going to go and tell my friends about it, but I'm not going to go and watch the video myself because I wanted to stay alive to see if this person was to die within these seven days. But I'm going to stay alive so that way I can spread this story all around. I'm just going to go ahead and just go everywhere and tell everyone about this story. But I'm not going to give them the tape myself. I'm going to eventually have somebody find it and hopefully go into the right hotel uh, for whatever reason. And then forcibly have them eventually just stumble upon the tape. Anyways, so Becca is to reveal this knowledge of a tape that is to kill somebody in seven days. And Katie is like, well, that's such a coincidence because I had watched said tape last weekend. And so if I were to have been Becca, I would have said, hey, Katie, Last weekend was X amount of days, so you should probably be dead by now. So, uh, so what eventually happens is, so, Katie is to make this joke where it seems like she's, like, kind of choking up, <gasps> and she falls over, and Becca catches her, and so Katie's like, huh? And then Becca's like, you know what I would have done? I would have dropped this girl on the floor. 
freaking had her hit her head and I'm like, yeah, that's what happens when you pull that kind of gr garbage. And then Katie would have died from getting that huge bump on her head and be like, oh my God. <laughs> and then that's how she would have died within the seven days. And then we would have moved on from this whole scene. But no, that's not it. So eventually there is to be a phone call and I guess, weirdly, either one of them were expecting to get a phone call saying that they're to die again with seven days. You're going to get, like, two weeks out of this? <laughs> like, so, eventually, phone calls to be had, and Katie is eventually talking, I think, with her mother about things. And so, Becca is kind of making jokes about, like, uh, about Katie's mom and drugs and stuff like that. So, so... What eventually ends up happening is we have a TV that is leaking. <laughs> Cindy, your TV is leaking with water. Because I guess that's just the weird, bizarre thing of the ring. Where we have to have, like, water mixed up in this because of well. But still, like, we have TVs that are just watering up. They're crying because you're not watching them enough, I guess. Also, we have tube TVs in this whole thing. I'm like, yeah, bringing it back to the tube TVs. Now we have, like, flat screens or plasmas or LCDs and brand names that I would know because I've freaking sold TVs for, uh, or I've been around TVs for far too long and I know too much about them. Far too much. I wouldn't recommend it. So... So eventually what ends up happening is Becca is to eventually find her friend dead uh, because the uh, because eventually Katie is to, of course, uh, been in this closet and she had the life seemingly sucked out of her. So Becca is to go into an insane asylum uh, and to... Never, ever want to avoid watching a TV again. She didn't actually see the video. She didn't actually... She didn't see the video, but, like, bizarrely, when she's in this loony bin and she makes it from one hallway to another, there's a TV in one of the rooms. And so they end up having a curtain uh, to try to avoid uh, Becca looking at this TV. I'm like, why wouldn't you just blindfold her? Like, just push her out there and just blindfold her. And just be like, okay, like, you're not going to see this TV anyways because you're blindfolded. Simple resolution. <laughs> but what am I to say? So, uh, so pushing on. So, we find out that evidently Katie is to have a family because why wouldn't she? And so... That connects Rachel to Katie. So they're going to have a funeral for Katie. And it's probably not going to be an open casket. Because that for race. <laughs> but so. Rachel is to be getting a phone call from somebody. Uh, while tr trying to make it to Aiden's school. And. So. Rachel is to make it to Aiden's school. And Aiden is to go off. And so Rachel is to sit back and talk to Aiden's teacher. And so this teacher is to mention, hey, yeah, like your your son has been drawing some very interesting but disturbing drawings. And Rachel's like, okay, just pop him out. Like, what is he drawing? Is he drawing a wang? Like, is he drawing, like, how inappropriate are these drawings? Because uh, I know there's some childish people that eventually would just weirdly just be doing the weirdest drawings. Uh, and I don't know why. Because uh, eventually that happens in school where people are just like drawing severely inappropriate things. It's bound to happen. So uh, anyways, so the teacher is to give these drawings to Rachel. And all of these drawings are, are of this girl getting buried. And so Rachel is just like, well, Katie had passed away like three days ago. And so like Aiden's just dealing with it. Like that's like, I guess his thing now. He's just bizarrely just 
uh, drawing buried people for whatever reason. He's just trying to cope. He's just trying to deal. And the teacher is like, well, here's the thing about that, uh, Rachel. Uh, your son has been drawing, like, ha had these drawings, like, a week ago. So this kid must have some, like, psychic ability. Stir of echoes. And, like, he knew what was going to happen. Or it's, like, maybe this is, like... Wait, Manifest. Like, Manifest has the kind of the same thing, too. We have, like, the young kid who is to kind of, like, see things and no one else does Manifest or The Sixth Sense also, technically. I can see dead people. Anyways. So Aiden knew, like, supposedly, like, numerous days ahead of time that Katie was going to die. And I'm like, okay, that's weird. So, Rachel, like, goes and is to, like, uh, try to, like, like, have no never mind about Aiden drawing women dead before their time. But eventually it seems more and more that, like, Aiden is to have this kind of weird sense about things. It's goofy, but anyways, so, uh... So Rachel is to go on and head to this funeral after party uh, of Katie's. And so Rachel is mixing it up with some uh, with some young teens. And eventually we uh, get, uh, I think his name is Adam Brody, uh, who he doesn't have an actual name in this movie. Uh, Adam Brody, if you guys are the OC fans, Adam Brody is in this film. And uh, so I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, so Rachel is kind of talking to these teens and they end up bringing up the video. And evidently Adam's character didn't actually watch the video because he would have been dead. But he knows about it. Uh, and when he, like, is to mention it, the other teens are like, shut up. Like, don't bring it up. It's just going to spread the lore more. It's basically like Nightmare on Elm Street, where it's like, hey, spread the word around. <laughs> spread the word around more about this whole Freddy Krueger guy. Like, he can go and just slice somebody up in their dreams. Like, there's no way to defeat this thing, really, unless you get really creative. <laughs> so... Rachel is to want to track down, like, the origin of how, like, since they keep talking about this video, or since the teens talk about this video, she's like, I gotta figure out what this is. And so she decides to go to the same hotel that they went to, because uh, what happened was, I guess they were trying to record over some football thing and ended up seeing this ring video instead. So... Rachel goes to this hotel and is to ask if, like, these people had, uh, had kind of, uh, known this person or maybe they have, like, a registry or whatever. So, Rachel is to just conveniently say, it's like, well, I'm gonna go into that room and, like, because I, I, I really want to just, uh, kind of rest up anyways... But really, she's just conveniently going back into that room so that way she can check on things to see if the videotape is in there. And coinkadinkly, she finds it. So, of course, she ends up going ahead and just watching it herself. Because if you know of a video that is to end your life, uh, and also Adam Brody's character was to say that coincidentally, Katie's I think boyfriend was to die by some kind of accent. A accent? <laughs> he was to die from some accent. Accident. On the exact same night as Katie. Probably at the exact same time, too. Because I think uh, Rachel was trying to figure that out. So, uh, so Rachel goes, watches the tape, and then brings the tape with her. And... So, since this girl is to be a reporter, she just wants to spread this story around. 
Like, I think she was trying to do it as some article. Uh, but then, like, I don't think she was live long enough to really just get this article out there. But it would have been, like, that's how they really should have ended the movie. With putting the article out there. Not the video, but the article out there. So all of a sudden, a bunch of readers can all now, like, Hey, we need to figure out where this videotape is. And they, uh, and weirdly, like, <laughs> this person knows exactly where it is. Uh, so, but again, I want to know the origin story of why this tape was made. Horse breeders all of a sudden, like, busting out a, a movie? <laughs> These people just, okay, like, I want to know if, like, uh, Samantha just had, like, a taste for film or something. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, so... Rachel goes and she is to give this tape to a guy named Noah that evidently was a previous lover of hers. And we end up finding out in the movie that uh, Noah was actually supposed to be the father of Aiden. But Noah decided to just not, uh, like, take on that mantle of fatherhood because it, because Noah was just like, well, I don't think I was going to be a good father, but I also weirdly don't want anyone else to be your father also. I'm like, scratching my head, just going like, wait a minute. So he's a piece of sh and he doesn't want to be daddy, but he's also just like, well, I'm just going to C block everybody. And no one else is going to get into Rachel's pants. And because I don't want Aiden to have another father. Why not just knock some boots with Rachel and just be dad? Because I, I don't get it. Anyways, pushing on. Uh, so... Eventually, Noah has this, like, technology uh, in his hands where it seems like he is to have quite been a filmmaker or a person that has, like, some real legit knowledge of this. And I guess, like, uh, having a reporter and a, and a guy who's, like, maybe Noah was previously her cameraman, and that would make a lot of sense. Like, I'm trying to make this story a lot better than what it actually is. Or maybe Noah was just in the editing room of this uh, reporter job, and hence why they got together. Uh, again, making a better story here. But Noah had his own equipment, and so Noah watches this film, and then after that, he kind of like he kind of pulls it apart and tries to edit it. And eventually, Rachel is to see that there is this one little slice that uh, seems kind of weird. And that there was some part of this film that um, was to be some kind of secret part of this film. So Rachel has to go off into this other uh, place of like film editing, whatever, to eventually take a photo of something from this film. And so Rachel is to find out while well, using this equipment and it eventually malfunctions. She takes this picture and it's of this lighthouse. So she's like, oh, now I have to go into even more research. I have to go to a library and find every single lighthouse in existence to see if I can match said lighthouse with, uh, with this picture. And so coincidentally, the very first seemingly book that Rachel is to toss back, she ends up finding this lighthouse. And she's like, okay. Uh, so now she traces the life house to uh, eventually uh, a woman named, named Anna Morgan. And Anna Morgan, of course, is with uh, a husband who is, of course, to be a Richard Morgan. And evidently they're horse breeders. And so Rachel's like, oh man, I want to go and like look this up even further. And so evidently Anna had died because of a horse related accident. And 
we also eventually have Noah who's going to do some research for his own and he's going to look up uh, certain kind of files about um, the Anna Morgan family. And coincidentally, he ends up finding out that Anna Morgan had a, or maybe uh, like, I think he ends up looking up her medical files. And he ends up finding out that there were supposedly 66 miscarriages of this woman. And Noah's like, why so many? And I'm like, yeah, why so many? And I'm just like, were they really just, they're really just trying to uh, have a baby. Like, you would have thought they would have just adopted at some point. But I guess they're like, no, man, we're really going to try. We're really going to try this. and Or maybe really just Richard just couldn't, like, throw on a, uh, a condom, if you know what I mean. He just, <laughs> he just couldn't get some protection on his wing, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, like, I just, like, I'm like... Wouldn't you have thought after like uh, like a baker's dozen you would call it a wrap or something? But like no, I guess with these people they just kept on trying and or that or like there was a lot of like uh, accidents that would happen with these with these people. But because uh, when you would get like sixty six miscarriages, you would also have to like go into thinking like, well, there were sixty six tries for that. <laughs> it's a joke. I'm having fun with this movie because it was boring. So, uh, Noah is to also find out that there is to have been a specific video that was also attached to uh, Anna Morgan's medical file. And weirdly, that tape is gone. So, So, we'll get into that. So Rachel is to uh, go all the way. Because uh, I'm, I'm really fast-tracking this. Uh, I could also mention the point when Rachel is at home and all of a sudden she's to, like, pull something out of her mouth and just pull this thing out of her mouth. And at the end of it, it's some, like, medical, uh, like, thing that she ends up pulling out of her mouth and out. And then she drops it and she's like, eh. And then also she picks up the phone and the phone is like bleeding from the, <laughs> from the ear part of the phone. Uh, the old fashioned like pickup phones that are kind of like the, the, uh, what's the word? Uh, landlines. Uh, Cause this is a old fashioned retro style film. Uh, not much people have landline phones anymore because it's all like most people just are like, Hey man, cellular, but maybe not everybody. So, uh, so eventually Rachel decides, you know what? I got to solve this thing, uh, because I've pretty much ruined enough of people's lives. And we also seemingly will ruin one more. Because eventually Rachel is to kind of get up uh, on one day and find that Aiden has also watched this video. And so Rachel's like, no. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and so Rachel ends up grabbing Aiden. She's like, how could you? And Aiden's like, well, I'm sorry. Like, I was like, I couldn't sleep. And so I decided to watch a video that is to ruin my life. <laughs> I thought this was Teletubbies or what the heck is like popular for that certain age range at whatever time that that really was. I don't know. He-Man? <laughs> this is like 2002, so nothing. Because like at a, like at a certain time period, like cartoons just lost its luster. Uh, like... Right around, like, probably in, like, the like the late 90s, it was basically just like, hey, watch the news, because F anything else. <laughs> like, especially when I was getting out of high school, like, I remember um, that they just, like, stopped doing kind of cartoons. And I was like, God, where am I going to find cartoons? 
but it seemed like they kept getting more and more like, oh, you have to go to this very specific channel to only see cartoons. And I was like, F that. Like, no. Like me, a younger child, just saying, F that. No. Anyways, so. Uh, so Rachel is to go and uh, and seek out Richard Morgan's place, his barn his stable of things. And so Rachel is to do this by this cruise ferry thing. And she ends up going and is to stumble upon this horse. And so all of a sudden this horse is to just stubbornly like, I'm going to get out of here. And so this horse that's in this uh, seemingly uh, caged environment, all of a sudden breaks uh, from his caged cage and like unlocks it himself because he had the spare keys. He's like, I have the spare keys, <laughs> Wilbur. <laughs> if you guys remember Wilbur, you, you had a good childhood. I barely remember it because like I saw black and whites uh, black and white movies and shows and stuff. Uh, cause I like retro things. Like I really did, especially when I was a kid, I was like, yeah, give me some of that sweet black and white movies because those were so cool. Um, to just kind of like be like a person that wasn't going to watch the more current stuff. I'm going to watch a black and white show or a black and white movie. Like I want to watch the oldest possible thing you can give me. And I'm like, mm, yeah. Um, so this horse, of course, ends up just kind of like going through the entire boat ferry thing. And like we just have Rachel just like running like she's like a, a mad person. She's like, a horse! <laughs> Everyone run! So, so here's what happens. So this horse is just running so quickly and so fastly that all of a sudden the horse doesn't realize that there is to be a part that is going to be end of boat because usually a horse is to eventually just go, Oh, well I can just leap over this, uh, this end of this boat, which is going to end me into water. And so we just end up seeing this horse and like the horse is just trying to swim in all of this water. I'm like, no, <laughs> no. Like I was like, God, like right. It, if Rachel could have saved that horse or switched places with it, I would have just like, yeah, Rachel, go on that water and the horse is just going to be watching you drown, sadly enough. Because, like, that was a horrific moment. So Rachel was eventually trying and going and, and trying to find where the horse ended up. But the horse, sadly, disappeared and a bunch of Red blue appeared at the end of said boat for whatever reason that I did. I want to say that the horse eventually swam away and like in some other thing got caught into some part of a boat. And that's what that red uh, blued was for or Kool-Aid or whichever. Uh, <laughs> the Kool-Aid man got caught into the boat. The horse is okay. Uh, like, it didn't actually die or anything, horrifically. The ring. <laughs> you watch a movie, and then you go, <laughs> Wilbur. Anyways, pushing on. So, hopefully no one dislikes this video, because, like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, like, jokes in a horrific scene. But, like, I had to do it. Uh, like, I have to, like, justify a boring movie and try to make fun out of something. So pushing on. Because um, I don't like that scene. It's It sucks. Uh, so pushing on. And I don't even know why I said it, but, like, people need to know a scene exists. So Rachel ends up getting to Richard's home. And so, of course, Richard... Richard assumes that Rachel is there. Richard and Rachel. This is going to be a hard combination to like get the names right. 
Richard assumes that the reason why Rachel is there is because of the whole horse accident story. And Rachel's like, sure, that's why I'm here. <laughs> of course. How did he know? <laughs> and coincidentally, while Rachel is looking throughout the house, she ends up seeing certain references of parts of that video. But again, I would have been the person of Rachel to just like, hey, why video? Why did you guys make the video? But eventually, as soon as Rachel eventually does mention the video, Richard is like, oh, how could you have, like, how could you have seen that video? And how could you, like, how could you have asked me about it? How could you? But anyway, but let's back up a little bit. So Rachel is to talk uh, to Richard about, like, like, hey, like, it doesn't really seem like you have much, like, it doesn't seem like you're taking care of horses anymore. And Richard is like, no, like, I have stopped uh, taking care of horses because really it's just uh, like a waste of time. Because supposedly what had happened was the horses like would always get spooked weirdly for some reason and decide to try and escape from, uh, from their barn. And eventually they would run off to the water and sadly disappear god god this is a horrible movie for horse lovers i'm sorry um so that's why richard just stopped uh like breeding horses because a lot of times it would just be a waste of an investment sadly so uh, so eventually, uh, Rachel is also to ask Richard if Richard ever had a daughter or a son or a child or whatever. And, of course, Rachel, Richard is like, no. But eventually we find out the exact opposite. So, like, at first, I guess we were probably thinking that the real cul culprit of this whole thing was to possibly be Anna Morgan, was to be the one who is killing people. But we end up finding out it's her little girl, Samantha. And I'm like, okay, this story just got, a, got interesting. Um, so... Eventually, Rachel is to talk to Richard about kind of Anna eventually, like, trying to give birth to a child and stuff like that. Uh... And eventually, I think Rachel is to mention to Richard, it's like, well, like, I'm sure you probably didn't even want these children now, did you? And so eventually Richard gets angry and is to tell Rachel, it's like, what is it? What is with you with reporters? Like, man, you just like to go and find out about somebody's tragedy and... And take that story and spread it like wildfire, like it's a, like it's a disease. Like you want to just take the worst part of someone and spread it around, hope that everyone will get just infected by it. Um, I thought I was like, man, that is just like the most interesting thing that you could ever say about a reporter ever in a movie. And it's coming from this film. The film that is just... <laughs> what? <laughs> cool line in one part of this movie because a lot a lot of the rest of the film is just... Blah, 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 blah. That was like the one cool thing about this movie. And that'll be the thing that I'll remember about this movie hopefully forever. Is just like the coolest thing like said about reporters, which... Like, hey, people could also say that about reviewers and any number of people that eventually spew out any number of things from another source, unless you can magically spew that out yourself and then... Cool. <laughs> so... Uh, so, eventually, Rachel is to go through this guy's VHS collection, because, of course, she would... And she stumbles on to the tape 
that uh, Noah was trying to find and had gone missing. And so Rachel is to start watching this thing. And she's like, am I going to get another phone call telling me that I have another week to live? Because <laughs> I, I watched the good video. <laughs> so Rachel watches this video. And it's, of course, of Samantha, uh, who's to be, I guess, being at a therapy session or to be therapized by this doctor in some mental hospital. And so Samantha is to mention uh, that her father doesn't really love her, that her father was the reason that I think she ended up getting sent here. Uh, but here is also the goofy thing. Uh, we also see like other like stories that could probably or quite possibly contradict that. Where, like, we assumed, like, Samantha was off in this mental hospital for probably the rest of her life. But maybe they just couldn't figure out what to do with her, so they just shipped her off back home. Or really, they couldn't figure out what the problem was, and so they just shipped her off back home. That's what I'm assuming. Because what actual problem did she have? Was she a horse scarer? <laughs> What did did she just have like bad voodoo or something with her? And that was that it? Stir of echoes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now on Blu-ray and DVD. <laughs> Why am I promoting that film heavily in this? <laughs> uh, uh, anyways, so pushing on. <laughs> Kevin Bacon, try it out. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> I made myself laugh. I'm sorry. So, uh, so Richard is to see Rachel watching this film. And I think a lot of people could assess that that could be a scary part of this film. So Richard is to see Rachel watch this film and he decides that there will be no end to that videotape. And because... Richard thought that that tape was going to die, uh, but it just seems that eventually Rachel is to hear about it and come to him about it. So he's like, this tape is just going to get out there and people are going to know about it and it's going to be a never ending thing. So, and it, it's all going to eventually come back to him. So he just wants to try to end this circle of things going on. So Richard decides to set up this huge electronical thing with a bunch of cords and all that stuff to eventually decide to jump into his overflowing bath to end his own life sadly and so eventually noah is to make his way to where rachel is and then eventually they start like trying to go and comb through this entire house uh eventually finding there is to be some room with this big huge tree that was bizarrely burned into this uh part of this wall which was really intriguing but eventually they're just like trying to figure out it's like okay like we need to find like like, more about this. We need to figure things out. We need to fi find out what happened. Uh, and so all of a sudden, like, Noah is just getting so upset uh, because Rachel is just like, well, like, I don't have enough time left to figure this all out. So, Noah, you're going to have to figure it out with the time that you have left. Uh, or you're just going to have to take Aiden and do the best that you can because, like, you guys are eventually just going to have to die. It's going to have to happen. And, but here's the thing, though. I think, like, Rachel does beat it out. We have to assume. Anyways. So, Noah and his frustration is just to, like, chuck things all over uh, this room. And all of a sudden, all these marbles weirdly just fall into this one place in this entire 
uh, room conveniently. So Noah's like, oh, okay, we gotta move this rug and we gotta see what this is under this floor. And all of a sudden this floor is have this like really wet spot. And they're like, oh, okay, so Noah has this ax and he's chopping down this floor. And he of course ends up seeing this well that was sealed. And so they remove the cover and they're like, okay, like, well, how deep is this? And so Rachel ends up like chucking a rock and they can't really hear a sound. I'm like, so is this like the golden child where Eddie Murphy is walking through that one spot and he ends up flipping a coin and he's like, there's no ground here. <laughs> like there's obviously no ground here. So, uh, so they're like, okay, like, what, what are we going to do next? All of a sudden, Rachel, uh, like the floor ends up kind of caving down. And so the TV ends up knocking Rachel into the well. And now she's like falling forever into this well. And then she, badoosh, splashes upon the water. And so Noah's like, oh, okay, well, I'll figure out something to get you out. And so Rachel's like, okay. So Noah tries to go and get this like hose, this like firefighter looking hose. And he ends up grabbing it and then he ends up like falling over. And so he's trying to get this rope. So eventually Rachel is to kind of look like around the well and uh, you would naturally naturally assume that samantha would be down there and just like hey and like scare us at some moment but no that doesn't really happen but all of a sudden there's to eventually be this black hair that's in the water and so rachel ends up grabbing it and all of a sudden uh samantha ends up grabbing rachel i guess that's a scary part of this film but all of a sudden rachel gets this channeling of samantha of what had all really happened and everything that had played out because Anna had uh, gone with uh, Samantha next to this well, and Anna mentions that Samantha's greatest gift that Anna has ever gotten. But then it eventually takes a uh, hefty or garbage bag over uh, Samantha's face, suffocating her, and then tosses her down this well and then seals the deal on the well. But evidently, Samantha didn't die from that suffocation. And so she was stuck down that well, and she was stuck down that well for seven days. And then she ended up dying. So all of a sudden, Samantha's body surfaces, and it looks like Samantha having a fresh dead body. But then... Uh, like Rachel holds onto it longer and then we just start to see the body slowly but surely decay. So uh, Noah comes back and so I guess both the body and Rachel like come out from the well. Like there's police officers and stuff here. Uh, just uh, so Noah is to confirm to Rachel that they're going to bury the body soon, like probably within the week. So Rachel's like, okay, so technically she's free from the well, so she won't be killing anybody anymore, right? Like, they assumed that they freed the body, and so, like, this will all end. Kind of like Stir of Echoes did, where eventually, uh... I don't want to ruin the movie. Go ahead and check it out. <laughs> but it's similar. Anyways, pushing on. Uh... So, Rachel is to go back home, and she thinks all is well in the world. Uh, Noah is kind of, like, being at his apartment, and, like, he's kind of doing his projects and stuff like that. So, uh, oh, we also forgot about Aiden, who is to weirdly draw these, like, big black circles of things. Uh, and to also have a babysitter at some part of this movie. And so... Rachel heads back with Aiden, and Aiden's like, oh, do you have to go to work today? And Rachel's like, no, I have a day off. So, 
Rachel is to think that all is over, and Aiden's like, no, it's not over, as his nose starts to bleed. And so Rachel is like, oh my god, like... Like, we're probably, like, uh, like, we probably have kept this thing going. So, or that it just won't stop. Because Aiden is to say, it's like, well, like, why did you do that? Why did you free her? Like, she'll never sleep. She'll never, like, she'll never rest. She'll never stop doing what she's doing. And so Rachel is to run off to Noah's place and... Noah had had a very fun visitor uh, because Noah, of course, like his TV was turning on with static and Noah's like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to watch some static today. I'm just going to turn this thing off. Like, it's kind of funny how we don't even have static on TV anymore. It's just like a buffer screen or whichever, unless you like whatever, because <laughs> eventually a lot of people have like either smart TVs or something like unless you still have a tube TV, which is cool. Like, that's great. Um... Hence why I still have, like, logos with static on it, because it's, like, a retro kind of thing for me. And plus, also, I, I would like a movie that they kind of bring back static, because I think that's a cool thing. Um, like, it wouldn't, like, make sense to, like, okay, why is this TV have static? Because it would be cool. It would be a cool throwback. Um, it's an annoying sound, static is, but uh, whatever. Anyways, pushing on. So, uh... Eventually, Noah is to just kind of turn off his TV and just kind of go to his projects. And so the TV turns back on, the well is there, and all of a sudden, uh, Samantha is crawling out of the well and crawling out of the TV. The TV is leaking, and so eventually Noah is to pop his head over to see this woman and... So Rachel crazily is driving like a maniac to get back to Noah, uh, Ziz's apartment. And so by the time that she makes it there and is to just kind of slowly see like Noah is covered in water, which is not a good sign. Maybe he peed himself <laughs> of fear. And so Rachel is to eventually kind of slowly but surely make her way to the chair and Noah's face. She's to see something, but we don't know what it is. And then so Rachel uh, goes to uh, like the stairwell and sees uh, Noah's assistant making it up to the elevator. And so Rachel waits till this girl gets to the elevator for her to run off and to uh, eventually go on with Aiden to... Like, Rachel burns all the copies of the tapes, but then I guess she had, like, one other uh, kind of copy left. So, Rachel and Ed and, and Aiden are talking, and so Aiden is to say, it's like, well, what are we going to do with whoever, or what are, what are we going to do if we ever have to give this tape to another person? Like, uh, like... What are we going to tell them? What what should we, like, uh, how should we help them to kind of figure this out without actually watching the tape? And that's just how the movie ends. I'm like, ah, stir of echoes. <laughs> you stirred my echoes. <laughs> echoes my echoes, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but I think with that said, that's the end of this movie. Uh, check out that Kevin Bacon movie. Uh because people might like that more than this one, uh, or probably have never heard of Stir of Echoes, so check it out regardless. Uh, I had, like, a boring time with this film. Like, I had to kind of, like, make jokes up in my head while I was watching this movie, and but, like, that had nothing to do with what I was to say or do or whatever here. But there was a lot of, like, thinking processes happening while watching this movie. Um... And so maybe, yeah, maybe the jokes came from any number of those things. But I'm going to get out of here. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody.